G'day guys, I'm Jason. Welcome back to Streetcar Culture's YouTube channel. I'm here with Adam from Head Start Development. He is working on my uh, head for my F2T conversion. So if you guys have been following uh, the Mazda budget build, I'm using the motor from a front wheel drive and converting it to a rear wheel drive. So I can't use the original Mazda front wheel drive head due to the dizzy location. If I put it in my rear wheel drive, it will actually, uh, I'll have to cut a hole through the firewall. So what you're able to do with the F2Ts is you're able to run a rear wheel drive either HB929 uh, Mazda or a van head. So I've uh, sourced an injected van head. This is actually the second uh, van head. Usually vans get flogged and when you checked out the first head, you realise it was um, it was uh, no no good to use, I guess. Soft, bent, um, pretty much everything that could go wrong yep. had, had, had gone wrong. Yeah, so, so I got the calls a bit devastated, but luckily um, I sourced another second-hand head. Now you might be wondering why I'm going second-hand head. The point of doing this conversion is to keep it a budget build. If I buy a new head and then go everything new, it sort of defeats the purpose. I've got a complete motor already there. So luckily for me, uh, the second head I supplied was actually in really good condition besides one crack. Yep. So we've got Rod from HSD. Um, Rod welded up the crack for us, which will give you guys a quick look. So I'll throw the, I'll throw the, um, the footage of what um, Rod and I did. Crack's been fixed, the head's in good condition. Adam is currently checking the dual valve springs. Um, anything to do with FET, aftermarket parts, is really hard to get or almost non existent. So I was lucky enough that um, one of my mates, Adrian, um, supplied me with the dual valve springs. Um, you've checked these valve springs. Yes. And you said they're actually pretty decent for what yep. they are. But the issue we've got is actually because this head didn't, never came out with dual valve springs, where uh, Adam's a bit worried about the inner valve spring and how it seats. So we're gonna give you guys just a quick look at that now. 
and um, and I'll get Adam to explain sort of what he's doing. So let me grab the camera. I'll we'll go from there. Uh, our main issue is that as the spring sits where it's meant to, it can walk around. Yep. And in actual fact, that when the spring's oscillating and bouncing up and down under revs, that it can actually pull the stem seal off. Uh, as the stem seal sits on that, yep. it can actually work it off and yeah, pull it off and then it'll suck oil in, yep. uh, blow smoke, it just, it'll start hurting everything, run detonation, yep. especially in a turbo build, you don't want that. Okay. So, so what are you sort of suggesting? So we what we're going to suggest is to machine this step down on both sides yep. and run what we call a spring locator which will then sit in there once it's machined flat it'll actually have much better location and then the spring will actually have location and it won't be able to oscillate around yep all right awesome so i think that's the way we're going to go but um the main reason i'm here today is while Adam's working out the dual valve springs, we're actually going to take you through the process of uh, pocket porting the head. Um, if you know the F2Ts, you know that um, they make more torque than they make horsepower, and they're not a high revving motor. So uh, hopefully Adam's going to use a few little tricks just to help it flow a bit better under boost. Not that it's probably um, too crucial under boost, I've, I've sort of been told, but anything while the head's here anything's going to help so let me set up in the porting room and we'll show you or adam will show you sort of uh what he's going to do It should still be yeah. okay. okay. But I've just got to... Yeah, that's all right. So as you just saw me do, I used the grinder to start off with so that the grinder would actually take more metal out. Uh, takes it out quickly, in other words. And then we'll go in with a, a finishing burr to actually just give it a light textured finish and actually get rid of any high spots. Yes. 
I mean, you saw me <coughs> roll roll the head over and then do this back edge. And that's the most important edge for actually doing any performance work. The one just up up behind the valve seat. And I didn't want to take a lot of material out of that, so that's why I didn't go in with the grinder to start off with. Because these are actually rather thin there anyway, I was able to get that and make it a nice rolled edge instead of a sharp edge. But a lot of first time porters will just think bigger's better and they'll just go in and hog out as much as they can. A lot of people will see that, that lump and go, that doesn't need to be there. But in actual fact, that's the back of the spark plug housing and where your actual socket will go through. Now we have a bunch of different verniers and tools with little legs on it. So we can stick them in areas like that and measure and go, okay, that's 200 thou thick. Being a turbo application and it's gonna see a lot of heat, I don't wanna actually hog into that too much. I'll just smooth it off a little bit and make it actually breathe. aluminium actually sticking oh okay to the clock up clock yeah up. Fresh. <laughs> 
So I've pulled the head out of the wash, uh, cleaned all the the wax that we once we poured, just to stop our burrs from clogging up and gumming up. Now I touched on the, the, the short term that that radius was one of the most crucial ones. It's very easy to stuff a cylinder head and go too far. See this this engine being a little stock camshaft, it'll only have a maximum of a 350 thou lift. If I flatten that out a lot, it'll actually go backwards because the valve will never actually lift past where it's actually productive. We also like to finish our heads with a textured finish. A lot of people complain and go, oh, I wanted a polished finish or there's a lot of he said, she said in this industry. It's a personal preference. We do it this way. We've been doing it since the 80s and have actually proved in other videos that we've actually got them to atomize the fuel better with this method. So I'll touch a little on a little more in the flow room and show why we didn't want to take too much out of the short turn on this. So I was talking about that we're taking too much out of the short turn. This is a perfect example that on this first flow, we're only lifting to 400 thou, so it's only going to make 195 theoretical horsepower. Whereas on this one, it's flowing and making 270. It's still only making 250 at 400 thou. So if you're only lifting to 400 thou, that's all it's going to make. It's you're robbing yourself of horsepower. And this is all measured on a flow bench, which is a super flow bench. This emulates what an engine is actually doing and will suck and blow out air. So if we're flowing an inlet, it'll suck it in and tell us how much CFM the head can produce. Right, and not only do we do a little intro porting, like intro to porting, like what we're doing on the Mazda, um, we also do full on competition race engines. Uh, this is a SR20 Neo, so the variable valve lift uh, SR20. I've got a lot of hours in this. Um, but this is flowing up around 300 horsepower, so out of a two litre, that's a lot of good air. Not only do we do aluminium, but we, we specialise in early holders. This is one of our Bathurst spec heads. This is just, again, it's sort of an entry level head, but just to so show you the kind of differences, is there's, a, there's a standard one here. So we remove this whole pillar, square it up, make it all neat. On the Bathurst spec, that's fully ported all the way through. The standard heads flow 180 horsepower. The Bathurst spec flow around 270. So we get pretty good gains out of them. We've been doing it since the 80s. Well, not me personally, but Eddie's been doing it since the 80s. So we've had many years practice on the uh, early reds. Grays, blues, um, yeah, as you can sort of see around the joint, there's a sort of a mixture of everything. We've got Cadillacs, Holmes, V8 Holmes, Alfa Romeos, small block chefs, but we also do crack, crack repairs, as you saw Ed welding the other day. So we find the cracks and we'll end up grinding that out and welding it up. All right, so we're based in Moorabba and we're happy to help you out with whatever pro, um, project that you've got on, whether it be lawnmower or a Formula 5000 small block chef. We're happy to help you out, work out a package to suit your needs. Turbo, NA, whatever you need, hit us up and we'll be happy to help you out. All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed me following Adam around. Hopefully Adam hasn't been too annoyed with it, <laughs> another shadow, but it's quite interesting. As Adam sort of said to me earlier, um, very rarely you get a, a, an insight like this, a company willing to let you sort of run around their factory and actually um, film people 
doing this sort of work. So I hope you guys find it inter uh, interesting. Now, um, if, if you guys want to do something like this, obviously if it's just a junkyard build or you're mucking around with some sort of cheaper stuff, grab a couple of shitty heads. Um, have a go yourself if you've got sort of some stuff lying around. But um, if you want, if you're sort of going more higher end or bigger power or you want a professional to do it, then obviously someone like uh, Adam from HSD comes into it with their sort of 30 plus years of knowledge. So I appreciate, um, appreciate HSD taking on my little Mazda sort of budget project. They, um, they were quite excited and willing to take it on. So that was awesome because I had no experience with uh, porting or headwork or anything. And this to them is just, you know, they've got these sort of 350s and, you know, race cars and all this bigger stuff, but they're still quite happy to take this on and show you guys and even myself the process of doing this sort of stuff. Even uh, when we had a crack and I was filming uh, Rod welding the crack, it gave me sort of an appreciation of how much work even just goes into fixing a crack. You might think, oh, a crack, they just run over it and they're done. It's shape, it's welding it, shaping it, pulling the, um, the valve seat out, a bunch of work which obviously you would have seen in the film. So again, appreciate uh, Head Start Developments. If you guys need any work done, they're based in Moorabbin. Um, as we said earlier, they've got experience in anything and everything. Um, and they do top quality work from little stuff like this to, you know, 1,000 plus horsepower stuff. So hit them up. So yeah, we're sort of um, just got to finish the... Um, yeah, yeah. A couple of seats. Yep. Um, make sure that the valve seat is correctly machined and true to the valve guide. Yep. Um, so get them seating correctly, give it a skim, machine the spring seats. Yep. And yeah, it's Bob's your uncle, she's ready to go. Yep, so once all this is done, then um, we're, we've got our head starts and our metal gasket. We'll whack it together and um, We'll sort of, Mal may, might even actually see if I can whack it on the dyno once it's all built and we can get some um, some numbers on, um, yeah, sort of how it, like how much power it makes at what boost and that will give us a, sort of an indication of um, what we've been able to do to this sort of a, a traditionally a low horsepower sort of van head, um, non-boosted head with not much work but some smart work rather than expensive work. So. Again, I appreciate it. All thanks right. for showing me around. And um, thanks for tuning in, guys. If you guys enjoy what you've seen here or want to see even more um, porting stuff or head stuff, hit me up because I can always hit Adam and the team up. And if they've got a cool project like you saw the SR Neo stuff, maybe we can film a bit more. But let me know in the comments and I appreciate you guys um, tuning in. And I'll see you at the next one.